my name is Attorney Walter of Not The Third, and what we're going to be focusing on are the four scams that usually happen to people who are applying for or receiving Social Security Disability Benefits or Social Security Benefits in general, including retirement. Let's go through that real quick. These are the four most common Social Security scams and how to avoid them. This is specifically from Investopedia, and uh, essentially, I'm not seeing a date on here, but the way it printed out, which was horrible, everything is really screwed up. It's all like down the center, etc. Alright, so let's go through this real quick. I'm going to try reading this. It's all like one word down, so if I seem a little off, that's why. Here we go. With some 65 million Americans receiving Social Security benefits, it isn't surprising that scam artists invoke the program's name in fraudulent phone calls, text emails, and letters. Their schemes typically involve impersonating the Social Security Administration in order to obtain and then misuse Social Security numbers and other personal information. Here's a rundown by mode of delivery of the common Social Security scams. Check and see if Sweetie's out there. Along with the steps to take to avoid and report them. So here we go. Key takeaways. Scammers use phone calls and email messages to impersonate Social Security personnel and trick people into giving up personal information. Common tactics include threatening to cut off Social Security benefits or charging for services the Social Security Administration provides for free. Scams should be reported to your local authorities, the SSA Office of the Inspector General, or the Federal Trade Commission. Or you can re report it to all of them, which would be the best option. Fraudulent threatening phone calls. This is number one. When the National Council on Aging announced its scams to watch out for in 2019, bogus phone calls related to Social Security benefits topped the list. The Federal Trade Commission, FTC, says the number of such calls and their financial impact is growing exponentially. The calls often involve people or robotic voices pretending to be from the Social Security Administration, SSA, who try to get your Social Security number or demand money according to the FTC. The agency warns that callers sometimes use spoofing techniques to make the, num to make the genuine Social Security hotline number 1-800-772-1213 appear on the recipient's caller ID screen. The caller may also identify themselves using the name of an actual SSA official. The SSA says the language used in these calls has become increasingly threatening. In recent years, the caller typically states that due to improper or illegal activity with the person's social security number or account, they'll be arrested or face other legal action unless they call a particular phone number to address the issue. Obviously a little bit more severe than calls about your car's warranty, although we all get those. The tone of such calls, I'll have to go grab Sweetie shortly. The tones of such calls is in itself an indicator that they are fraudulent. The SSA does, does contact some recipients by phone, but they're almost always people who have current business with the agency. And an SSA employee will never threaten you for information. They will not state that you face potential arrest or other legal action if you fail to provide information, the agency says. In such cases, the call is fraudulent. In a rel now, I mean, I've, I've heard some interesting things from some SSA personnel, but I've also heard things that they were not, you know, within their jurisdiction to make as statements. But, you know, I, I think this is a general rule is a good rule. In a relatively new spin on this scam, criminals are now sending threatening text messages purporting to be from Social Security. But... According to the office, uh, the Inspector General at the SSA, Social Security will never send a text asking for a return call to an unknown number. Social Security will only send text messages if you haven't opted into, received text from the agency, and only in limited situations. Number two, fraudulent friendly service phone calls. Another type of scam call attempts to sell the to the recipient services the SSA readily provides at no charge. The caller might, for example, offer to the offer to provide a new social security card, enroll a new family member in the program, or provide a record of social security contributions to date along with the expected uh, future income they will yield. Number three, fake email headers and phishing. Victims can also be reeled in by phishing emails that appear to be the messages from the appear to be messages from the SSA. The emails may have attachments that resemble actual letters from the SSA, complete with the agency's seal and similar font styles. The email messages may also direct readers to fake web page designed to look like the real SSA website. The motive is to obtain personal information from you, which you should never provide. The same clues of fraudulent intent as with the phone calls apply here. The SSA says that legitimate emails from the agency never seek personal information and do not adopt an alarmist or threatening tone. I mean, so they usually have your personal information in them, or they won't have any of that in it. Important, the Social Security Administration 
says it will never use intimidating or threatening language in any form of communication. Uh, I've seen otherwise, but we'll, 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 we'll stick with that. Number four, social security fraud by mail. While the rise of scams perpetrated electronically and thus cheaply has reduced the volume of social security fraud by mail. The practice has not entirely vanished. One such scheme is a direct mail scam that primarily targets older people. A letter comes in the mail offering an extra check along with a form asking for personal information and a filing fee. In it, the scammer asks the recipient for a social security number, money, and or bank account information to help with the application. Again, this is a red flag. The Social Security Administration will never ask for your full social security number because it already knows it in the event the SSA does send you a letter. For example, when your benefits increase, it will never ask you for money or any other personal information. All right, that's not actually a true statement because the SSA will uh, require you to supply your full social security number over the phone. It will require you to put your full social security uh, number on application-based forms. So that statement will never ask for your full social security number because it already knows it is de facto false. Um, I, I don't know why they put that in there, but you, know, you want to apply for anything with the SSA, you're going to have to put that on it. That's how they know how to look you up. You know, John Smith comes up a lot in their system. They need a social to pick you up. I know, sweetie. Sweetie, I'll be right there. Okay. Um, uh, for example, when your benefits increase, it will never ask you for money or any other personal information. Important. The Social Security Administration will never ask you for your full Social Security number. It already, that's all, that's incorrect. All right, here we go to the how to protect yourself portion. How to protect yourself from Social Security fraud. As with all scams, the best way to avoid becoming a victim is to stay vigilant. They always say that, but it's like, stay vigilant. Uh, you know, what does that really mean? If you receive a phone call asking for your social security number or other personal information, it's best to hang up immediately. You may also want to consider adding the caller's phone number to a blocked call list to help prevent repeated nuisance calls. Unless, of course, it's the Social Security Administration calling you to verify that it is you. Unless, of course, you know... But then the problem is these hackers are using phishing, you know, swapping numbers, so that makes it look when it comes up, it says SSA, the phone number from the SSA. It, it's tough because the SSA does ask you for your full social. Now, everybody in my side of the industry, we all use the last four. That's how we all communicate. And the SSA is starting to catch up with that. Everything's a last four gig. Um, I'm almost done, sweetie. Uh, actually, I'm not almost done. Let me go get it real quick. Okay, guys, we're back. Uh, be aware, however, that spoofing allows scammers to use or at least display to you a succession of misleading numbers. So unfortunately, blocking the first number that calls, you doesn't stop further calls from different phone numbers, or you might be blocking the actual SSA. Be sure that your information, including your social security card, is stored securely, shredding documents with sensitive information rather than just putting them into the trash. Now, that's an important one. Um, well, how did this go? Oh. That's important one, guys. Um, if I could make one big suggestion out of all this, it is to shred documents that has that have your social, I can't know the lights in these, so I'll take these off. It's to shred documents that have your social security number on it, your address on it, and that's all of it. Whenever you get, like I have a big thing here, everything that I read that has any personal information on it, I don't care if it's the, I don't care if it's like the full spelling of somebody's name, I don't care if it's a birthday, I don't care if it's a social, I, it goes into a special bag, and then the bag goes to shredding. So my point here is, if I could convince you to do anything, I mean, some of you guys, you could even do this. You could just, you know, put it in a solution that takes dye out, whatever. You could, I mean, if you're in the country and you're living in Bithlow, you could burn it. You know, bottom, bottom line is, you know, apply as needed to destroy the document as appropriate. But you don't want people having your name and your address because then they're one step away from getting your phone number from one of these websites and they're one step away from getting your social. All right. Be sure that your information, including your social security card, is stored securely. Shred any documents with sensitive information rather than just putting them in the trash. If you access the social security information online, keep your password to yourself and change it regularly to minimize the likelihood of your account being hacked. That's another thing too. Um, when you guys use your phones to store your special cards, your social, your this, your that, um, please keep in mind that when you lose your phone, there are trained people out there to be able to access that information and then sell it. So just kind of remember that. So phone wallet, purse, pocketbook, whatever you want to call it, protect that stuff, okay? All right, remember a lot of these criminals, a lot of these drug dealers out there, their thing, their new thing that makes a heck of a lot more money faster than dealing drugs is basically manipulation of workers' comp benefits, manipulation of insurance benefits, manipulation of COVID benefits. That's like the big thing right now. That's how they make their quick money fast. They also get caught and go to jail, 
but they don't get caught for a couple of years. All right. It's also worth checking your credit reports on a regular basis to make sure no one has compromised your financial information. A paid credit monitoring service like TransUnion, they're not in here, but just I use TransUnion, might also be helpful. Finally, try to keep up to date with the latest social security scams. The SSA's Office of the Inspector General monitors these and issues warnings as new schemes arise. <clears throat> I've been seeing them try to tackle them for a while, and it is of my opinion that they're not very successful with it. That's not meaning that they're not putting enough effort towards it. They're probably putting a lot of effort towards it. But the bottom line is your personal computer that you received your email, they don't have control over that. Uh, you know, your cell phone, what you say over the phone, that's the biggie. They have no control over that. All right. How to report a social security scam. If you suspect you've been the victim of a scam or simply want to report calls or correspondence that you find suspicious, you have several options. You can call your local authorities or the OIG hotline. 1-800-269-0271, and that's the Office of Inspector General. Again, 1-800-269-0271, or submit a fraud report on the OIG's website, which, you know, it's a link. you got to click it on the paper, and you can't click paper. You can also report the scam on the FTC's complaint website. That's super-duper important, too. You should do that. Make sure you document anything you can to add to your report, such as telephone numbers or website, the name the caller gave, the time and date of the call or email, what information you were asked for, and anything else that might help identify the scamster. Remember, these people are blocking their IPs, so you're not going to get, I mean, they're not going to call you and be like, hey, it's Josh Brolin, hey, and their name actually be Josh Brolin. It's not going to be that. Hey, I'm Kelly Clarkson. It's not Kelly Clarkson. I'm just telling you ahead of time. So the information you collect, it's important to collect it, but, you know, and it'll be able to show, you know, intentional fraud because they created the name to intentionally, you know, create a fraudulent situation that you would buy into to give your social which is horrible, and it increases the amount of criminal you know, time added on to their sentence. But the reality is, guys, you're not going to be able to get much information off of them. That's why the OIG, that's why the SSA in general is such a hard time with these guys. You know, if the FBI was watching and the, you know, and the uh, CIA was doing it, and they were you know, figuring out, okay, the IP led from here to here to here to here, and it bounced off seven countries, and it went to here you know, at the ice cream store, that you might have a chance, but you don't have access to that stuff. You know, nobody does other than to buy into a company that protects your websites and your emails and your yada yada, which we have to do. Develop your financial strategy with an advisor. So let's see what their advisor has to say. A comprehensive financial plan can help you make the right investment decisions and prepare for retirement. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, that's pretty much the end of the article, but they were... They threw in a little extra. Okay, so here's their Investopedia, right? This is, yeah, Investopedia. Here's their Investopedia part. A comprehensive financial plan can help you make the right investment decisions and prepare for your retirement to develop a strategy that's right for you. Use smart assets, free tool, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Bottom line, this was actually a really good article. It, it basically tells you that essentially, um, oh, wait, there's more to it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Da, 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 da. Cool. All right. No, no, there's sections more to this. Let's go through this. And, and remember, I'm reading it, how, how it printed out, which is just absolutely awful. And they do it this way because they built their HTML code to have more SEO built into it, which causes it to do this junk. Phishing. Phishing is a method of identity theft carried out through the creation of fraudulent website, email, or text appearing to represent a legitimate firm. So they're just defining terms. What is social engineering? Social engineering is the act of exploiting human weaknesses to gain access to personal information and protected systems. You know, like, what would you do for a Klondike bar? Well, they're going to find out. Spoofing. Spoofing is a scam in which criminals attempt to obtain personal information by pretending to be a legitimate business or other innocent party. That's where they go ahead and put, you know, at the top of their phone coming in that they look like the SSA, Social Security Administration. Identity theft. Identity theft occurs when your personal or financial information is used by someone else to commit fraud. So there's two elements, used by somebody else to commit fraud. Form W-9, request for taxpayer identification number, TIN. Uh, certification. Form W-9 is an internal revenue service form which is used to confirm a person's taxpayer identification number, TIN. Boiler room definition. A boiler room is an, an operation that features high-pressure salespeople peddling speculative securities. Read how to spot avoid boiler room. Okay, so this is just words, some of which were used in this article. All right, here's my take on the whole fraud situation with the SSA. They're not in control of it. They know they're not in control of it. They know that they have a big problem with it. People are giving out their social security numbers and information to people all the time that they shouldn't be doing that with. 
Um, it is my opinion that what you should do is first and foremost make sure your phone is not hacked in any weird way. You know, most of the problems come through phone calls. Oh, you're from the SSA. Uh, here's the last four of your social. Can you validate the rest? Oh, yeah, it's doopy doopy doo. No, no. Okay, they don't give you the last four of the social and have you validate the rest. I've seen that one pop up. Claims call me. They're like, oh, yeah, the SSA called me. I'm like, what did they call you about? Oh, this, this, and this. I'm like, that sounds really odd. What they ask you? They asked me to verify my social. I'm like, oh, no. What'd you say? Oh, they gave me the last four and then I had to give them the rest. I was like, oh, no. So that's one that pops up. That's quite often. Uh, make sure first and foremost your phone is not hacked. Then, after you've made sure that your phone is not hacked, you can look up things on like you know, how is my phone potentially hacked? But if you notice things that are a little bit different, you start searching things on your you know on your uh, Safari or your Chrome or your whatever on your phone, and all of a sudden Windows Explorer, and all of a sudden you realize it looks a little different, or I keep getting these searches that are not related to what I'm actually searching or whatever. The bottom line is your phone could be hacked. So first. Is your phone compromised? Then, if somebody calls from the Social Security Administration, ask them for their extension. A lot of these people in this, you know, system, they don't have an extension. They've got like their phone number. Like if they're a hacker, they usually don't have an extension number. They usually have that phone number. Now, right now, because of COVID, a lot of these people have specific numbers to them because they were sent home and they're operating from a cell phone at their home, like DDS. Okay, so that's a rare situation. We won't have that all the time, but almost always ask them for their extension number. Another thing that you can do is say, cool, what's your phone number and your extension number? Then look up online to see what the phone number is and then do the, you know, dial by extension, put the extension number in and see if you get back to them, right? That's, that's gonna be one of the better ways to actually, and, and another thing, and this is probably the most important thing you learn from this video. When it comes to the Social Security Administration, the hearing office, like when you do judge stuff at the OHO, uh, you know, ALJ level where you're, you know, talking to the judge or you're doing appeals council stuff or you're doing field office stuff like the local field office. The field office is essentially like the local place that you go to. That's the hub for all your information. They all use a five digit extension. There are five digits, one, two, three, four, five digits for their extension. DDS uses a four digit extension. So if you're on the phone, if somebody calls you like, yeah, I'm from uh, Display Determination Services, blah, 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 and they give you a five digit extension, that's fraud. If uh, you know the local field office calls you and says, yeah, just give me a call back, blah, 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 here's my extension, it's only four digits, that's fraud. Field office, five digits, DDS, four digits. Hearing office, five digits, appeals council, five digits, okay? All right, um, another thing that you should know about this is that um, sometimes when you talk to the SSA, they can be grumbly. So that language about them not being aggressive, <laughs> eh, I've, 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 seen, I've seen aggressive. I've seen aggressive many times. So uh, my, my point to you is I don't know if I would follow that. They can sometimes be a little hangry just like everybody else. Um, you know, they can get a little grumpy. So that's Sweetie in the background shaking off the pool water all over everything. Another thing that I'd like to say about this whole scam thing is this. Um, the SSA tries to alert, warn, alarm you guys, whatever you want to call it. They'll print it out on the back of their envelopes. They'll put a little section like the fraud section at the bottom of a lot of their stuff. But the, the problem inherent with most of this stuff is that they are not in control of it. And they don't really have a way to train all of you guys you know, to understand better how this works. That's why I'm doing this video. And the reason why is I actually now have more subscribers on the Social Security Administration. I would like to see fewer people getting scammed because the sad thing is the ones that get scammed the most are the ones that usually are not doing super duper well financially, like they're receiving the lower end of the benefits. And those are individuals with low IQ, individuals with trauma to the brain, individuals who basically, you know, are easily tricked, they're younger individuals. They're usually the ones who receive a smaller amount of money in their social security benefits than like say somebody who's worked their entire life was a super CEO, is receiving the maximum amount, is getting their full retirement, yada yada. You know, those individuals know how this stuff works for the most part. It's the kids, it's the, um, it's the low IQ individuals, uh, trauma to the brain individuals, the PTSD people who have been manipulated their entire life and now somebody calls and tries to make them feel good. These are the people who usually get uh, taken for a ride and unfortunately their identity is stolen. I think it's like 20, 25 bucks for TransUnion. 
Um, I pay for it because honestly, when I was going to apply to buy a house, I had a $40,000 credit card on my file that was like not mine or any of mine. You know what I mean? Like it had nothing to do with me. My name got added to it. So the reason when I was younger that I could never like get credit is because I had a, a $40,000 credit card sitting on my account. I always thought I was just a loser, but then then I realized that's only part of the equation. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you a little bit later. Uh, remember, if you like this channel, please like, subscribe, and the other thing, five-star reviews. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, in the uh, bio area below, there's little links that you click to give five-star reviews. They help me the most because they help me compete against uh, these big box law firms. Other than that, I hope all is well. I'll catch you a little bit later, and we'll go from there. Oh, also, I donate two hours every week Thursday. On Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know, like East Coast, uh, I go live and I answer questions for people. And it's kind of like when I do my update news, like I'm becoming like the disability news person, like what's going on in the disability field? What's the commissioner doing? How's the president doing? How are people doing? You know, so that's kind of what happens. I do like a 15, 20 minute intro on the news. And then we have people call in and I run questions with them or answer questions that they have. And then I wear myself out and then I go to the USPS and mail off a bunch of initials. And then I basically go to bed and wake up and it's Friday. Yeehaw. I'll catch you a little bit later. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much. Bye-bye.